Hey guys, I'm here to do somewhat uh, of a talk through, walk through, talk through on Graphene OS and why I think it's great and maybe a more in depth uh, th thought process of how to essentially create a very secure and a maybe possibly a more private uh, phone experience, especially if you're carrying it around or you're tired of stock Android and you kind of want to leave that ecosystem and not be forced to just go to Apple or get an iPhone or use a flip phone or no phone at all. And just kind of like my experience and thoughts, what I've had in the last uh, like year, maybe year and a half, I think going on Maybe two. I don't remember. Whenever I got it and switched over, because I, rem I remember I used Calyx OS at first, and then there after reading and thinking, there's some things I didn't really like, and then I switched to Graphene OS, and I I haven't gone back since. Um, so the first thing, one of the first really good parts of Graphene OS that I like is that you can just start dive right in no net like no network needed no sim card nothing um i'm not really gonna talk or walk through like the whole um the whole like like how to install it i think there's enough videos out there for that but i think a lot of people gloss over like one really cool feature that a lot of people don't think about, I think, or maybe they do, and I just, I haven't came across it, I don't know. Um, so, if you unfortunately have to buy your phone through your mobile carrier, or you just don't have the cash, and but you want to like, take the right step and direction to getting Graphene OS, first, cash is going to be the best option. It's good to just go to a store, miles away from you, pay cash, set it up under public Wi-Fi, miles away from you, and mitigate as much uh, collect uh, data points as possible. That's how I would have I would have done it. Like I would do it or should or ought or whatever. Because it helps remove um, a lot of just like pinpoints of like you buying here or you buying there and use your card, but if you buy it through your carrier, it's attached to you and your name and your IMEI and then you have your Google Play and that's attached to you. You're, you know, you're kind of doing um, <laughs> the opposite. So one of the best things you not only can do that is to get to the point, to get to the point, one of the best things you can, why it's so good is when you install Graphene OS, it removes all the stock bloat bullshit. All the pre-installed apps. Now you can't do it with Verizon, like Verizon, I think they have a way, it's just their bootloader can't be unlocked, or they do something funky, um, uh, which is kind of fucked, but you know, make sure you're buying, if you're buying it unlocked from online, that you do not buy the Verizon version, I think. I believe it's still that's still a thing. But the um, the main point is try to buy it cash. Don't buy it secondhand. Completely pointless. Um, and from what I read is that that IMEI could be essentially attached to another account, and then it leaks to them, and then leaks to you. It's just better to honestly buy a clean slate. In cash, they generally have the six or the last model, whatever it comes out. They have that those models. Don't get something too old because it's kind of stupid. Because then you run out of you're going to run out of support. But get the model of the year that like that doesn't come out. Like if this eight's coming out, get the seven. They're always running deals. Like comp like like Target. Like I saw the six A for like four hundred, like three hundred bucks or something, like three fifty or two fifty. If you can, like, if you can fork over that kind of cash, it's it's well worth it to be only a year behind versus three years, four years, and then now it's kind of pointless and you just lost all your security updates and support. The second 
you don't have to like have your carrier sim card or anything in there it's great but if for some reason like if you have popped in or you do eSIM or whatever Graphene OS's uh, privacy policy is amazing. It's they do admit that they keep everything logged for about ten days, and after ten days, it's wiped. So, and this is another um, W. Uh, you can install all of your updates offline. You could sideload them with the a uh, Android ABD tool, which is pretty based. So you can download it, go and put in Fastboot. They have a guide, and then you can install the, all the updates manual that way. If you're wor if you're more paranoid and you want, you want to be connected to the West Internet. I know the hated one says he doesn't use cell phone service at all. He just runs off Wi-Fi, my pseudo, and like public Wi-Fi and stuff like that. That's a bit extreme. Michael Bazell's like, um, he doesn't bring his phone within like a five mile radius. He puts it in a Faraday bag. That's a bit extreme for like the average user. But it's like, if you want to go to that extreme, um, you can do that and it's great. You know, remove the SIM card um, and just work off my pseudo and like public Wi-Fi and like, or just get a data only plan. Like you can get data only plans. And that's what I'm going to talk about in a second. I think the, the most easiest way to maintain some form of privacy and anonymity with your cell phone is to get a prepaid service that has no ties to you. That is not even close to you. Even go, you can go as far as getting um, an area code that's just not native to you i mean that's a little security through obscurity but just try to disconnect everything much as possible naomi blackwell blackwell she does a really good video on how to like separate from you and your number and then michael bazell's book um basil it's basil i think whatever his book and he goes in depth on how to set up a, a void how to separate you from your number and i think those are like, there's people out there that do really good guides on it if you want. I mean, just go go to their channel, their site. Uh, but I think uh, also a lot of people over over overthink that part. Like, they don't realize, like, how good it is to be able to just remove all the, like, bloat. It's like a fresh install. You get 32 and 32, yeah, um, profiles. Now, after you set up your phone and you choose your route of your carrier like how your carrier work like i would just go get a mint mobile visio mobile whatever prepaid sim load it in there take your personal number that you've used for x amount of years port it to google voice unfortunately or another carrier any other carrier i uh, like uh, port it to them and then do call forwarding and never give out your new number ever that's the cleanest way because then no one has that new number and you still get all your calls and your contacts from your old number that has all your metadata and all of your shit attached to it or if you're cool with getting just a straight new number just get my pseudo i think they're good i think they're well worth what they offer or just get a couple numbers from what you call it mint mobile they have unlimited plan for like 15 bucks so 30 bucks you get two numbers and then just prioritize what you want where you want to give what and what you want to give to um that's the big thing that is is like people put their number in for this and this and this and this and then they're like how does how does everyone find all this information i've never handed out my number where you handed out your number to the CVS employee, the Best Buy employee, this employee, this employee, and then it goes into a database and then it gets fucking sold, and then now you're getting spam calls. Why am I getting so many spam calls? That's why you're getting fucking spam calls. It's because you hand out your, your personal number, get a virtual number that's that's tied, not even like even remotely to you, and use that to re to mitigate as much as much possible. And you can use that for signing up for shit. Like, it's a real number that the problem you run with my pseudo sometimes is just not accepted and it sucks. I use my pseudo for a, a ton of stuff. I use simple login for a ton of stuff. But there's the rare occurrence where you get these fucking companies and they're like, nah, we want to fight spam and whatever. And then you're like, okay. So after that, you set up 
your profiles. Your profiles are the most, if not the second best option in Graphene OS. You set up each profile and, all right, I'm back. I don't know, some fucked up, but. So I'm gonna backtrack real quick. The, one of the best things about Graphene OS is having the ability to have different profiles. It's, it, it encrypts the data at rest. It takes each and every profile and separates it. Like they can, not even the root profile, like the, when I was reading the docs, not even the root profile can see the other data of the other profiles. So it gives you an immense amount of sandboxing. Sandboxing is like one of the best defense we have against uh, data just flowing across each other and creating data points. Even though it's coming from the same source, and you're on a like a cell phone like michael basil's like entire book is like pretty much use the phone to fucking call an email which makes sense but like that's not going to be for everyone but it allows you to have just a lot of your shit separated and more organized now i self-host pretty much all my services like i use edisync which is for my contacts and calendar i have my calendar all across my profiles all across my devices that I like I own or have or use. It's all encrypted, it's local, and I don't have to give access. Another thing, if you have my sudo and you have a data only plan for your phone, you can give each number to each profile, essentially. You just log in, you give each number to each profile, you have a different number for each profile that's a massive W. Like just separate a lot of your a lot of your data. That's like the real best part. Now my pseudo, in order for you to get it to work, you have to have it prior on a, a previous device. You cannot sign up for my pseudo with Graphene OS. I don't know why. I think it's a Google Play service issue. You don't have to even use Google Play service at all, but if you do you're just an average person that cares about better privacy, better security, more control over your device. You having the, the control to have different profiles and sandbox Google Play is a W. Now, they do talk in the docs that, yes, the data doesn't see each other. There's less identify information. Um, but remember that, like, you can go down to, like, the app level and block everything as like kind of like a firewall in and out and that's the real the real w i mean the docs go through a ton of information that like you you just have to read through it like the encryption is pretty awesome i was reading like how like ver like why verified boot is important because it helps protect against persistent malware trying to stay in your system it goes through a verification process uh, when you restart your phone to make sure that there's nothing running in the background, sort of like that's not that looks out of the ordinary because it does. They have a whole section on encryption, like how the encryption works, how the keys work, how the check, like how it does to check them, and that's what is different between your stock Android and made by Samsung for like 150 bucks that has no more security updates and more no more patches or phones that don't allow relocking the bootloader um that's like the big step between because good security is always going to equal better if not just a little just a little bit better privacy and that's what you should strive for even if it's an inch every year it's still an inch of like better privacy and mitigating like the the data collection as much as possible just also protecting your security is just should be um should be important and that's where, like, you know, why I prefer Graphene OS to Sandbox Google Play environment than Micro G. I've had little to no app issue with compatibility. Now, my pseudo, yeah, like I said, you have to have my pseudo first. Then you set it up. Then you set up one on each profile. And now you have good, solid separation of numbers. Like, this number's for this. This number's for this. Number's this for this. This profile's for this. This profile's for this. This profile's for this. Now, you don't have to even have 20, 30 different, uh, like, pins. Or, like, you can have one for one 
across all the same devices. But what it does is uh, the in the encryption I was section I was reading is each profile has its own key, and that key is what unlocks the the device. This is kind of how the root profile can delete it, like delete it. There's a, it's a lot of information. It's really cool how they allow this encryption to happen on each profile with no known key, but you're allowed to delete that profile without that a password or that key as the root, as the root. Um, and I'll link the docs down in the description. I mean, this is kind of just like how I would set it up. I would first, A, buy the phone with cash, set it up on public Wi-Fi way away from my, from my place, um, get an anonymous number. If you can, use my pseudo to help you just more affordably get a couple numbers or get a couple SIM cards with different numbers. Take your personal number and port it to Google, like Google Voice, and then just route all the forwarding calls to that to that uh, new number so that you can still receive your calls for stuff. Like called forwarding kind of like would help with that. Graphene OS kind of... Uh, has two sections that I want to discuss real quick. Wi-Fi and cellular is treated always hostile, untrusted, and not secure. Anything you do through your normal SMS and through public Wi-Fi, you are taking the risk of exposing a ton of data. Now, I'm not here to shill VPNs. I'm not here to shill any type of service that's going to be better. But if you find a reputable VPN and you trust them more than your wireless carrier, especially if it's pseudo-anonymous data, like very pseudo-anonymous, like, I mean, they, I gave them cash, I could gave them a zip code and I'm done. Like, you can kind of check that off as like not as important. It depends on your threat model. But if you don't want them snooping on a lot of stuff, you can use a VPN. And after reading the Graphene OS doc, Graphene OS docs, counter counter to what everyone believes, they recommend you use their whole their DNS servers through the v VPN. Like don't set up a different DNS with a different VPN because it ruins the herd mentality. Now, from a security standpoint, yes, putting all your faith in one basket is problematic, but I think Malvad and IVPN are good because, I mean, they accept cash, they accept Monero, they're relatively have been proven on a, on a certain vetted level that they are pretty, like, solid on their backing. And then use Signal because it is end-to-end -end encrypted. Use Signal, use Session, use anything but SMS, like... God, it's so bad, and RCS can suck a dick. But the most important is they recommend just use it. If you're going to use a VPN, which does not make you anonymous, you're just transferring your trust. If you're going to use a VPN, you take that VPN and use their DNS service so you can look. Because websites can still see that you're using a DNS, like a uh, DNS like you're you're trying to encrypt and you're encrypting like your traffic and everything. But if you're going to use that DNS server, so you look like everyone else, it's a herd mentality. Now, people do argue you can't look any more unique than you already do. You're already unique. There, I think there is a good. It's better to use an IP address from a pool and a DNS server from a pool where everyone looks the same. I think that's, I mean, most carriers and like ISPs, they're like, all right, he's using a VPN. Browser. Vadium, I think is the name. Fuck. Um, I can't pronounce that. They're only recommending using this. It is hardened, it is hardened version of Google. They explain that uh, mobile Firefox is not good uh, compared to like its desktop. After reading and kind of thinking about it, they're kind of right. If you need ad blocking level, 
VPN, block ads, or use Brave. Brave or Vadium. The Tor version of the browser isn't really as good, they say, for Android, just on how it works. But Vadium does a very strict, hardened version of, of their browser to help mitigate exploits, vulnerabilities, and be more secure. Because obviously, browser-based att attacks are always going to be at a, high, a higher risk, like higher risk level. Like it's easier. Or if you're not going to use a VPN, just get a reputable DNS, change your DNS to a DNS-wide system, like Quad9, Next DNS, and just run that. And that might help you with the ad issue. They are they don't really focus on that part as much from what I read and what I've looked into. Now, okay, you bought your phone in cash. You set it up in a secure, anonymous way. You set up, let's say, three profiles. One for finance, one for social media, one for work. The reason those profiles are also so good is because from what I read recently with Google, work profiles in an upcoming Android uh, update will constantly be running in the background. I was, it came across like my feed. I think that's garbage. It's going to be bad for battery life and they think that that's its own issue. So this kind of, I don't need to go get shelter at all. It's not unnecessary because I got the work profiles. I don't need to get a uh, firewall, even though I use the one from Fair Email, uh, NetGuard, the guy that made Fair I love that project. It's great. Cool guy. Awesome. Awesome person. Did a really cool thing. Don't need it anymore because now I got network level. Like, I got network level. I don't have to take up a VPN spot. And then the work profiles are set up with their own numbers, their own VPN, because, you know, there's still like a transfer of trust, whatever. And then after all of that, the best, one of the best, most underrated part of also Graphene OS is A, how this is how I would set it up. I put a pin on there. The scrambling part uh, can be good if you're in public. And then automatic reboot to reboot the phone. And what it does is it encrypts that data so it makes it very difficult to extract if someone steals it. And it automatically defaults to the root profile, which is even better. So every 72 hours, I have my phone reboot to encrypt the data at rest wipe all what i think it wipes the keys if i'm not mistaken um and then it forces it to the root profile i set up that i set up a pin for my sim card which you can do and you should do so no one can jack your pin your sim card and just start using it they have to know the pin if they fail at the amount of temps it locks it out and it does not work and then i use serenity I, Serenity, how they're one of their pre their apps you can get through Graphene OS. It runs as an admin app. If you put in that pin wrong, three, you can set the amount of times. I highly recommend this. You can download it for Android. I don't. You do not need Graphene OS. I run it on any phone that I get. You get this phone. You get this app. You put the amount of attempts that you can fail. It wipes the phone. It's amazing. They do not have access to your phone. They do not have access to your apps. They do not have ac They have pa a paperweight that they probably don't know how to use now. Um, and then they c and then you report it stolen or lost or whatever, and you hopefully have a way to recoup the money. Like some some credit cards allow you to if you buy it with credit, unfortunately not cash. You they'll like. Pay your pay for your phone if it gets lost or stolen or something, which is awesome. It's cool, but you know, or just eat it. So back to the back to the point. Set up setting up your phone in a very secure manner can be very difficult. Now, don't do all of this work and slip. If your intentions is, I just want a phone that works that has better security that I can have 
a different profile in there with multiple numbers, a fake Gmail account that has no tie to me that I do not care about, that I set up, you know, X, Y, Z over here. Don't log into Facebook on this profile. Don't call your colleagues with this number that you've never shown them. Don't open it on your Wi-Fi if you don't intentionally ever want to be connected to you. That's the, you have to be diligent with these kind of things. Graphene OS has a massive amount of information that you could spend hours reach. I kind of have, but it's, a, some of it goes over my head and it's a lot of information that you need to retain. And like, damn, this is, it's, it's an interesting rabbit hole. And just talking to the community, which I've had my good experience with on asking questions. Now, there is a wireless carry out there called PGPP, pretty good phone privacy, that's made by some very reputable people. I tried looking deep into the company to make sure it wasn't owned by a shady company, but they're fucking expensive. But they allow you to change your, um, pretty much, they're by invis the company's invisive, they got some private backers, which, you know, I don't know, it's like, you gotta always be careful where you put your money. But it, it's an interesting concept because you can change the I um, whatever your device identifier. It's like gives you a like thirty. It's like ninety bucks a month for unlimited data and thirty changes of your like your identifier that like tracks the ads. And I believe they use AT and T. Of when I was like reading into them, they're an interesting. Maybe they're a company to think about when you're setting this up, but they are an eSIM and you have to act with Graphene OS, you have to activate eSIM management privilege um, pretty much to make so you can use it at eSIM. Now, they do recommend 4G LTE more because it's inherently maybe a little bit more like some of these luggage systems a little bit better, but it's 5G is supposed to solve some security and privacy issues. But you're reading the docs, it's pretty much treat 5G, uh, like your LTE, your cellular carrier, as hostile. Your Wi-Fi is hostile. Now, they do make the Wi-Fi a lot more private, kind of. Like, they do a randomization at, like, the packet level and with your MAC address. And that's on by default. Like, you can keep digging into these settings and not never stop because it's pretty awesome now looking through it you it's a little bit harder but your privacy my personal opinion how i would set it up on the next i would remove as much sensors access you name it i would remove as much permissions as possible and I'm going to get to one more thing in a second. My like camera access, you can turn off. Allow sensor permission to apps by default. You can turn that off. A permission prompt will be shown when apps try to access the sensors. Note that some apps might stop running. That's something that you have to understand. I'm turning off anything for them to capture any data point, like little, like, you know, telemetry here, like from your body heat, from the this and this and this and this and this. They talk about it in their scope. Uh, you can even um, save screenshot timestamp to exit. And then they have a privacy dashboard. It tells you pretty much like standard. I know it's blinding, my bad. What you have, like what's access what. And then even more cool, removing a lot of these... Uh, sensors like like tracking like physical tracking and all these other data points is it gives you an insight of how much control you don't have with your phone and how much graphene os gives you control which is kind of nice i can turn off a ton of stuff that doesn't need access why does my calculator need my location access you know contact access not literally, but, you know, they said, by the way, I think the FBI is 90% of their, um, like, catching, up, catching like, criminals. Like, 70% 70, 70 of their criminals' case, it's caught through metadata. 
like metadata or like a who knows who or something shared here or here or there like you know it's it's cra it's crazy but it it gets even better with the amount of control you get because then you realize you're like shit I didn't have any of this and they've improved on they've done a lot of hardening and improved on a lot of like a lot of security on, on, in the phone in itself and it's it's great like I mean you could just get F Droid Aurora store done no Google Play um, most if not all apps work without Google Play services it's crazy it's crazy good that it it do, you don't even need that and then if you do use um, Graphene OS you get the privilege of like them purging your date like any logs after 10 days that's i feel like that's reasonable and kind of based now to go a little bit more into it on the main root profile like i said i would have definitely um where is it i would definitely have Serenity, uh, Century, Cen Century, Century, installed, and make sure you set that up for the security, the physical security, a pin for that, um, just kind of find where your threat model is, go through the set, like, after you set it up, go through the settings, see what's, like, what were, like, what, what do you need and what you don't need. Connected device, like turn off Bluetooth, turn off this, like do I need this? And find out like like what apps you don't even use. What apps can work without Google Play services? Can I get away with the bare minimum? That's the that's the joy. Like there's still stuff I'm going through, like every couple weeks I'll go through and I'll find something new that I didn't realize that I could do or have control over. And I'm really excited for the future of Graphene OS. And I'm just gonna recap. I don't know if anyone, if anybody's gonna fucking watch 20 minutes, 20 plus the other, like my thing fucked up, and I'm not re-recording. I'm just gonna combine. I'm gonna split these later and combine them. But if, I also want to thank everyone for for sticking around and watching. Um, but back to in a moment. I'm excited that we are getting into the era of where I can have not only more control of my security and privacy, but I can literally just get Graphene OS. This is it. This is all I need. Vidadium, messaging, contacts, settings, auditor, calculator, camera. I use actually the Graphene OS camera, like just in general. Um, but to quickly recap and, and get people like so they understand like what's what's your threat model, I would I'm just gonna you know sound like a broken machine and like repeat myself because I think it's it's important kind of is to buy the phone cash, set up the profiles that you're willing to separate, and put the apps there that correlate to that profile. Don't hand out your number. Get a reputable VPN if you don't trust your MVO or, or even your cell phone provider. Or if you're on a family plan and you don't really fucking want, you don't really like want to constantly have to worry about that. The DNS part, just use the VPN's DNS. Or argue in the comments on why you don't. Remove as much permissions as possible that you do not need. That's the bet. That's the great part. Net block networks and then storage scope. You can give at apps. This is a really sick feature. You can give apps something called storage scope or contact scope, even where it thinks it has full access, but it doesn't. It doesn't show any data. That's amazing. Set that up every single time, and it will trick the system, the app thinking that it has full access when it does not and mitigate the amount of permissions that you give each app 
there's uh i think it's x ex exodus exodus exodius exodius it tells you it's a really cool app it tells you which apps and what their permission is and what what they're tracking like it's an amazing app it's a good app to just go through your shit and be like okay i don't use this i'm removing it i don't use this i'm removing it and after that continue to hold yourself accountable for everything that you do like don't like get an anonymous number just literally walk in any place and get cat cash cash it out like buy a year of insert carrier here so you don't gotta worry about it and just be done and that's like i don't know that's my that's my experience with graphene us has been great i have multiple profiles there's even a guest profile if someone needs to borrow my phone and i don't really trust them and i don't i mean like they might say if they run off my phone i pop up the guest profile i hand it to them they make their call i mean they're not getting anything from it because everything's encrypted uh if they try to switch to the user profile or whatever I'm, I feel more secure with that because of the amount of steps that they have to go through to get through through my phone. Um, I mean, like, it's everything is separated. I would definitely recommend if you're going to buy it and you're kind of like a heavy picture or app user or you have a couple profiles, definitely get the Pixel with 256 uh, storage instead of 128 in my opinion and i would like uh i don't know i it's i think i should have went with the 256 that was that was my oopsies i'm probably if i the cool thing is like i'm gonna get this for i'm gonna have this until like end of life i think it's 2027 or something which is awesome but on until then, I'll pr next time I'll probably go for like the higher storage model, just for personal, like I need a lot of storage. But also, um, now that I'm towards the end, uh, I would like to thank all 490 of you uh, sticking around, liking my shit post, watching my stuff, and listening to me rant. I guess um, I didn't think I was going to make it this close. I'm very close to I, I, this. Is kind of cringe, but. I really appreciate um, getting close to like 500 subs. Once I do, I might, I don't know, like do something cool or something. Uh, I'm really passionate about like privacy and security. And I think that it's, there's not enough people that are talking about this. Because you always run into people that are like, oh, I don't care. I have nothing to hide. Oh, I don't care. I'm not that interesting. And I think that's such a shitty mentality to have. And, and, that's just like my I don't know like how I view I think it's so weird that people don't care because eventually we're gonna get to the point where legislation will start getting rid of encryption or whatever I'm not like trying to get political or anything but if they get rid of encryption then it's like we're gonna put a backdoor here and then it's gonna be like well my pro my conversations aren't even fucking private and then all this is for nothing I think privacy at the fundamental level is a, definitely a human right. And I'm glad that I now have the choice to choose my software, my operating system, on my phone. And I hope that Linux phones also take the same approach in better security and better privacy. And we get to a better era of the internet where I don't have to worry about my shit getting leaked all over the place. And I think that it's super important what what this team is doing, and I embrace it, and I hope other uh, custom ROMs start following it. Like, I hope Calix S starts improving and doing better. I hope that Graphene OS hits their end goal of being doing Zen Hypervisor and completely getting rid of away from the Android ecosystem. I think Android like Linux kernel ecosystem is what they want to get rid of. But that's like, you know, really far into the future. But it's it's cool to see. I'm excited about it because it's cool to see new tech and a new feel to it personally. Because let's be real, there hasn't been something cool uh, besides like the folding like phones in general in a long time. 
and we really don't we really need this as a change but i want to thank everyone for sticking around and listening to like how i view it as like a kind of like a person that's not super technically educated or anything in this and just kind of rant about it and i hope that everyone that watches this or gets this far um they end up learning something and just going out getting a pixel installing graphing os and joining the movement to a more secure and private internet that's what i hope and i'm glad that more people are picking it up and that if anyone has any questions please hit my comments i'll answer everything i answer every question as much as possible sometimes i forget or i don't get notifications uh all the time and if anyone has any issues with installing or they want some advice i mean graphene os has a really good community on element the privacyguys.com has really good forums that i've come across and then if you have any questions you want to ask me just drop them i'll answer them i appreciate everyone's time on this rant i don't know if this is like what people have been looking for um but definitely uh appreciate you guys you have a wonderful night peace out